Okay, welcome back to The Rant. It's part two, and it's very good part two, because, Glenn, welcome our special guest. Yeah, it's not Paul Daly. He hasn't lost that much weight. It's Glenn Schofield. Uh, um, yeah, I'm a fantastic fan after this weekend with Yonkers, but it's nice to have you on the show, Glenn. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And, uh, Glenn, walk us through your travails of the last year. I think you, uh, you ended up having some neck surgery. Yeah, look, I end of last year, December was the last time I rode. Um, and I, I obviously wasn't going so well at that stage, but uh, I think I think um, I probably should have had this this uh, medical attention done a little bit earlier than I did. It's it certainly helped me I'm feeling a lot better now. Um, of course, coming back and running a couple of winners so soon was really good. Yeah, Especially, uh, winning a group two on Saturday, my first Saturday back, which was great. Yeah. So yeah. we bumped We've had into the uh, two winners from about what six or seven rides. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, but you've won a lot of barrier trials. Yeah. But to be fair, it's, I, I think yeah, I'll be, to be around in most of them. So, uh... <laughs> to be fair, it was like some bloke on the USPGOT <laughs> going back to the Minnesota <laughs> putt putt competition. I felt like J Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it's good, a, good to know what that boy. feels like. <laughs> um, well, if, we bumped you at the uh, the Betfair function. Uh, when was it, Glenn? Last year? I, yeah, it was in between pandemics. So. Yeah, and uh, you were in a definite lull at that time, uh, but and yet you seemed very sanguine about it. Um, uh, tell us about going through that rut and uh, what it was all about and what it felt like. Like, oh, you know what? It's, it's it's a sport. Obviously, we're in a sport, and it's a you know sportsman. Generally, everyone wants to have a young sportsman. It's obviously you know in the prime of his life. And I've, I've sort of seen that before, um, but I've got a bit of experience as well. So, so it, that, I suppose the experience allowed me to deal with, you know, mentally those, those sorts of hard times are really, they're really testing. And you start to think to yourself, uh, do I really want to do this? You know, but at the end of the day, I do, I love it. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great job. Um, so it'll be a long time to do nothing. If I had have stopped, but uh, anyway, the, the injury uh, or the problems were the reason why I did stop, and and probably looking back at back at it, I should have had it a scene to a little bit earlier than I did. Yeah, and uh, going forward, I know you're similar to my age. I think I'm a bit older than you, but uh, how old are you now? Fifty-seven or something? Fifty-four. Oh, fifty-four. So you've still got six, half a dozen years of riding left in you. Well, I think I've got a couple at least, yeah. 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 So, and like, like you said, for a jockey, retire, like, what are you going to do? A bit of gardening, you just go absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's especially, look, especially with COVID, there wasn't a great deal you could do anyway. Yeah. Uh, no. So, so, look, I'm, I'm actually glad. I'm, I'm really glad I'm back. I've, you know, put in a lot of work to get to this point um, the last six or eight weeks. Uh, so, um, it's nice to, you know, you put it's in fair the- to say that your form before going out was average. Yeah, your, your straight record. What's the change? What's the change? Was it the neck? Was it the, um, did you just get sick of riding? Does it, does it ever get like that? I mean, none of us are jockeys. We critique them all the time. But does it get like sometimes you lose that little edge? Like, like J-Mac's got everything at the moment. He's got the, he's in straight to fifth gear, finds the PR in every race, does the right, gets him home. What's, what's it when you're sort of the outer end of your, your career? You know, when, you, when you're in that, in that sort of zone, everything I suppose it's, I don't know if it's the same in, in your industry when you're in the betting and all that things just fall into place automatically and it just seems to happen. And then you'll go, you'll go through a period of time when you can't do anything right. Um, and you know, you, you hope that those periods of time when things don't go don't last very long, but for me, it, it was happening every, every meeting. And I was, I must be honest, I was going to races riding 30, 40, 50 to one pops um, that had no hope. And, you know, Racing is a confidence sport. You've got to have your confidence if you're a sportsman. And, and you know, well, if, you, if you're two from seven on returning and you've had 87 barrier trial wins, you've got to say your confidence is back up. Yeah, well, that's right. But, uh, you know, but I can only I, look, I did win on a, a 40 to one shot on Saturday, but I'd like to be riding horses that have got a single digit in front of them you know, in their market rather than double or treble. Um, and they're a lot, they're a lot easier to win on than, than, than the other ones. But, um, you, you you know, if your performance is level that you're minding those rides, it's great. Hopefully, hopefully Saturday and my, you know, as you say, a couple of winners from a few rides uh, might attract 
better quality of ride. Um, and it yeah. would attract owners' attention, especially yeah. in the pool of rides we've got at the moment. I mean, I know we've got three or four right at the top, but I still think there's um, you know, they're 14 horse races and big fields at this time of year, and there's every chance, isn't there, to get to crack a few. So punters can expect you to. This show's only about punters, basically. I mean, I know we have a few jocks watch the show, and every steward in Sydney watches the show, but I think because they're trying to. Then what's your weight at the moment? I tell you, what, my weight's really good, really good. It had been obviously having almost a year off. I got pretty round in the wrong. <laughs> Taking a bit of hard work to get get it down a bit, but um, yeah, I rode fifty five on Saturday, um, which before I went out was a real struggle. So, so now yeah. it's a comfortable fifty five, which is important. Now, yeah. Going to the races, having lost two and three kilos. And you drive into the races and you've got riding 50 to one shots and you're thinking, yes. you know, you forward to the drive out when you've got a bottle of water in your hand. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, that's so true. Oh, it's, it's really difficult. Um, I, I was going to ask you about um, other jockeys who really waste to get big rides in races and they ride under their weight. Well, um, we all do. We all do. Yeah, but I have a tendency to not want to back those jockeys on the day because um, – they're not in a good state physically, so they're less and likely mentally. to do their best. So, um, <laughs> also a... Mentally anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, look, I, look, I see what you, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I'll tell you something from a jock's perspective. Uh, uh, if you go to races um, and you don't have to lose any weight, you feel sluggish. Oh, okay. So you, you're a bit stale. You, you yeah. feel a bit when you lose a little bit of weight, for some reason, you, you, I don't know if it's because you, you get hungry. You get hungry. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you get hungry, but you, I don't know if you because you, you, you're doing it all the time. Yeah. Uh, go to the races and you don't have to lose weight. You've got a little bit of extra weight on you or a bit of extra fluid, uh, uh, but you do feel a little bit better when you've lost not a could, lot. Could, not, could, could it be psychological, Glenn, in that if you are wasting to get down, it means there's a bloody good ride you've got on the card. So that sort of pumps you up a little bit. Uh, it, it, all sport a lot of it's physical but a lot of it's mental every sport i mean you look at the the Ryder cup today uh, uh it's just gone all those players can hit the same shots all the time but not every one of them have got the same mental approach yeah and it's, it's the same with i'm sure it's the same with horses it's the same with jockeys it's the same with trainers um you know you've got some people that 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 everything just sort of breezes by and then all of a sudden they hit a wobble and they don't know how to handle it. And then, you know, from my perspective, I've been around the world. I've, I've had, you know, lots of highs and this yeah. last year and a half have been, you know, the biggest low I've ever had. And it, mentally to deal with that's really tough. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm a, I'm a mentally tough guy. I've got people like you lot jumping on my back. Fucking. All day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's our job. You know that we, we stick up for the punters. We love it. Yeah. But I know, I know it's not personal. I look, some people get personal, but it's not. It's it's emotional. It's you know you're doing it. Uh, uh, like we look if if I if I ride a horse, I ride it well, and it doesn't win, I still get back because yeah. someone hasn't won. Because I'm yet to find a punter who turns around and says, you know what, I backed the wrong horse. In the, I backed the wrong horse in the race. Um, I, I, I'm yeah, Glenn, I totally agree with you there. They don't remember the ones where they won the race due to um, an unlucky other horse. They only remember the ones where they were unlucky. They're, they always think through their pocket. It's biased. Yeah. Any variables uh, in, in a horse race that, that you know, you're know you not in control of, but at the end of the day, we're the ones that are sitting on their back and we, we're the ones that, the, you know, the criticism pointed at. I mean, I've been watching, uh, I, was, I can't remember who I was telling it to, but, you know, watching races from a jockey's perspective you can sympathise and understand the decisions jockeys make. And if they go wrong, you understand that the decision's been made in the right way. But sitting on the, sitting on the sidelines for the last 10 months watching, you, all of a sudden you start to see it in a different way. I can understand how you, I, I don't bet, obviously, but, yeah. but understand how, how, how you guys on the other side of the fence are viewing it, and especially when you've got your, your hard end you know, on, on something and it doesn't go according to what your map says or what you think is going to happen. Um, yeah, yeah there's, there's frustrations, but I, I, I know, know from... Yeah, you know, 
you know I can give you the biggest gobful at Rose Hill and see at the Donny sat the night and have a drink with you. Well, that's right. I, and I know yeah. it. You know that. Personal. I know it's not. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not, it's just, uh, yeah. It's, just the nature of the game and do you, you know, remember that do you remember the best spray i ever gave to you at hawkesbury you know you mightn't remember it but i remember it uh you came out in like number five and number seven was this tiny little boy called chad schofield it was yeah. his first ride in the race and i looked at you and you looked at me and i said you should be fucking reported to docs which is the department of children's services i was that worried about him now he's in hong kong a multi-millionaire and just living life to the dream it's just not that long ago and i don't know if you remember it but uh, I think he looked at me, he didn't know what docs meant, but I was so concerned for his first ride because he was a little boy. He was tiny, Glenn. He, I think he weighed something like 32 kilos. He was too it small. Was, God, too it was small. unbelievable. I said, wow. I should report you to docs. You're not looking after your children properly, like <laughs> fair income. Rides, he was wearing like red and white halved colours. Mm, I remember. I, I, I was, I was in shock. I was in shock. And you, you looked at me. I, I don't know if you, you – I mean, I remember everything because I'm a bit mad like that. And you remembered – you looked at me and you said, he'll be okay. And I went, oh, oh fucking glad it's not my kid up there. And um, sure enough, look at him. He's a group-winning jockey in Hong Kong. It's a big – it's a long, big, long road. Got there. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's, lucky, he's lucky that he's had, he's had a lot of success because it's not easy to come by. <clears throat> yeah, well, you've ridden in tons of jurisdi jurisdictions. So, how does the Sydney landscape look to you, particularly as a sort of an older rider that's very experienced, but obviously doesn't have the dynamism that um, that uh, most of the owners and trainers are sort of looking for and have already organised, perhaps? So, Sydney seems a very hard place to chisel out a living from from your perspective. Um, yeah, when I, I came to Sydney almost directly from after I'd ridden in Hong Kong for a few, quite a few years. And Hong Kong was a tough place. Um, Sydney's, Sydney's one of the hardest places I've experienced to ride um, because obviously Australian racing is a little bit different to most. Um, it's heavily, um, every, everybody who's anyone in racing, they have an idea of what's going on. It's, it's very analytic. Uh, and you've got to have that analytical understanding. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize um, uh, when you when, when you first come here, everyone expects you to be along, you know, fall into that sort of category and, and have that understanding. And, and you know, I've seen a couple of the South African boys that have come over um, that are good jockeys that have, you know, initially they struggle. And, and until they understand that's what, you know, that's what's expected of them. And you, you, you get that knowledge from, your manager from people that use some of your form and listening to shows like yourselves and, and maybe some of the TV shows that go on as well. So you, you, you do adapt and you learn, but Sydney racing, not just Sydney, but just because I'm predominantly here, um, it, it is really tough. Uh, mm. Glenn, uh, racing New South Wales maps, do you and the other jocks talk about them and use that as a guide point as far as uh, positioning running? Maps, speed maps? No, no, like the, the racing the ones put Wales, out by racing the official, New South Wales. The official maps from racing New South well, Wales. Well, uh, there's a lot of different people put out maps, and, and they're not all. Yeah, no. So, uh, but does that one get more weight? Is what I'm saying because it comes from official books. Because they're going to criticise you because it's their map. Yeah, but a lot of. Jo I find it amazing that there's maps done on, on horses, but not maps done on jockeys. You know that certain jockeys like to be in certain places. Yeah. So you could have a jockey that likes to ride most horses quiet on a front runner. Mm. Doesn't mean it's going to be in front, but you put a jockey that likes to ride everything forward on a horse that gets back, it's going to probably going to be further forward by the nature of the way the jockey. Well, yeah, well, that's why I do maps. And uh, you know, I mean, obviously, Nash is going to go forward. Huey is going to try and be one out, one back. Um, you're going to have the horse balance. Um, they're the sort of general rules I have for particular jockeys. Yeah, so you can do a bit of form for horses and you can do a bit of form for jockeys as well. So you marry the mm. two, you might get a, a bit of a clearer picture. But generally, to answer your question, the Racing New South Wales speed maps from the stewards, um, yeah, you've got to obviously look at them because if there's a... If there's a uh, you can get into trouble. You can get into trouble. Announced, yeah. it's because... The connections have seen where the stewards have got you placed and yes. you differently. But 
another form guide might you have you in a different place i don't i don't really know but but yeah they, they do but you go mark what do you say about the change of tactics uh, scenarios that have that the stewards have basically implemented in the last since you've been in sydney um punters uh, tear their hair out of it well i come from i've been in racing in sydney now for 30 years so it's obviously it's part of part of me but <clears throat> never heard of a change of tactics you, you sort of kept that for yourself didn't you it was, it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now everyone wants to know what you're doing so in, in some ways it's good but from a jockey's perspective um we never ever if if a trainer went after race three to the stewards and said there's a jockey uh, a, a, a riding tactic change we're stuck in a jockey room we don't hear it okay so you you, you... <laughs> Um, you're not notified of anything else that might be happening in the race. Re uh, recent times we are because we've now been granted limited access to um, the Racing New South Wales website on, on laptops. Yep. Okay. Um, accessible to the, the, that website. So we can view um, tactic changes when they come through. But prior to that, we, the jockeys were the last one. No. No. <laughs> Well, funny, that's, ama it? that's amazing. Another horse announced it's going to go forward when you everybody thinks it's going back and you didn't know about it. That's that insane. Happened. That happened in the doesn't happen. Yeah. As long as you so long as you look for it, um, you'll find it. Yeah, okay. You've got to keep your eyes peeled on it. So what does go on in the jockey's room, Clint? At the moment, not a lot because they've segregated us all and we're all sort of like in little pockets in different areas of the racetrack because there's no one at the racetrack there's no owners there's no public they're putting three or four or five of us in little groups and rooms and we all so the, the camaraderie as a group in the in the old tradition of a jockey's room is not quite there <clears throat> so it's a little bit more sterile to, to one of a better word and and five years ago five years ago oh five years before the before covid the jockey's room is great but but, you know, but but what goes on? Do you play cards? Do you like? Is it? No. no? There's, a, there's some people that are like pretty serious and they get their head down and they don't talk much. There's other guys that are in there. So that'd be like probably Blake Shin in the old days. He would have been like that, I'm sure. Very focused. Donald's like that. He doesn't talk a great deal. He doesn't say much. Hmm. Nash doesn't say a great deal. Uh, with J Max he's, quiet. He's pretty quiet. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and Bayless is the is the is, makes everyone laugh. Um, there's a few blokes that are really loud and bubbly and all that. See, Don't I wouldn't you? have picked that about Reagan Bayless. I wouldn't have picked that he would like that. Oh, he's very funny. Yeah, he's very funny. It sounds oh. like a football change room. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a, it's a change room. You've got all different characters get together and fisty cuffs. Not no, no, no. Well, no, no, no. Just shirt pulling. Why didn't you let me in? You're a fuckwit. How come you did? Why did you no. take my room? It's another thing that, that I found amazing with the, the, the jockeys' rooms in, in, in Australia that jockeys are very compliant and, and accepting of the fact that, you know, uh, you know, you did me a dirty, you kept me three wide or you kept me in a pocket, you wouldn't let me out. It's just, it's just accepted that that's what happens. And if, and if somebody oversteps the mark, then you go into the steward's room and the stewards deal with you. And then, you know, yeah. that's pretty much enough, enough said about that. <clears throat> And I, I, I've noticed that change in listening to protests in the modern era that the jockeys just go and they go, well, I was there, he was there. Then they just, uh, away. whereas before they used to quite argue the case, whereas now yeah, they. What's the point of having two jockeys and two trainers in a protest from. from silly. Yeah. You're just going to say what makes your case stronger or, or the other one's weaker. And, and you might throw a bit of, you know, a bit of duration on top of it as well. See but... what happened. Let them, let them decide. Uh, Glenn, what about what about um, riding at tracks where there's considerable bias? Say like Saturday at Rose Hill. Um, were you aware of it, or when did you become aware of it? No, no bias for Yonkers. because he just came straight down. Oh, the that's bottom. what I'm saying. Like, what the hell happened there? <clears throat> look, look, I suppose Rose Hill always has has a tendency when it gets dry to be a little bit leaderish. You know. If, I remember Mike Fraser used to walk the course at Randwick and used to have a give a like a take on the length of the grass. I mean, <laughs> first, and we got onto the track at Rose Hill. The grass was quite short. Okay, I thought, oh, this track's going to be running pretty quick today, which it was. Um, 
but at the end of the day, you had a horse like in the Congo who broke the race record. Uh, he had every right to slow down the last 100 metres and get caught, but he didn't. Um, whether the best horse won the race or not, I don't know. Well, I'd say definitely not. But, but then, yeah. then, you know, that's what makes racing so good. Speed maps might say one thing, but it doesn't take into account the fact that the, the leader no, might be... I'm, I meant your, you, in your head when you're putting the horse into the barriers, are you, like, consciously thinking oh, should I do this in order to get to the fence? Or should I do this to try and take a more forward position? Or should I do this because it's a swoopers track and I want to be in the running line so I can peel wide in the straight? Uh, is that something that's very um, yeah. at the forefront of your mind? Well, the, all, all, those, all those thoughts you need to have prior to getting out there. You can't be doing that going into the barriers. You've got to have some sort of an understanding what what's required. And then, you know, you've, you've got to have a plan A and then, if something goes wrong, you've got to have a plan B or maybe even a plan C because, you know, the leader might get left or it might get scratched the barriers or yeah. you might go away and then, you know, all. So there's lots of different things that can happen. Not everything just runs smoothly. So, yeah, you got to, you got to do a bit of, you got to, you got to. And most of the time, most of the time, you're riding a good horse. The good horse will get you in the right spot and put you in the right spot. So anyway, did the jockeys um, discuss the uh, the bias at all, Glenn, or likely perceived bias? I know James Mack came back after he rode that mare uh, and complained. Oh, and what was fucking track? Can't make ground on the track. And I don't, I don't oh, know. How intriguing but, the first race. Uh, uh, on Trevi. Trevi. Oh, Jesus, oh, oh, got onto it late. We were onto it after race one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but you know, you go there and, and you might be thinking that that the track might be like, but you're hoping it's not because you're on a horse that swoops. So, but, so I've got Please. to say, Glenn, either Yonkers is an absolute champion or you're a champion or both because um, that was an amazing victory. Uh, you know what? Well, I don't think they both fit the champion category. <laughs> just step right in. There's nothing. One's a good tradesman and one's an okay horse, but it was a, a shit field. I, I mentioned that on Friday's show. They were poor favourites, top and bottom. Yeah, yeah the was... horse still had to do it against against the run of play, didn't it? He did so what does it feel play. like at Rose Hill there when you are sitting in that position, that sort of running line position? You put the left blinker on, you think your horse is going to um is going to go through the line, and they sort of go up and down and don't seem to be able to make any ground on the uh, on the leaders. Well, it happens often. Though. You just you just got to when you get out there, and you, as you say, you put your left blinker on, you get to some clear air. You're hoping that your horse is going to let down well. Um, if they do, it feels great, and you and you run past a few, and you hopefully you win it. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but most of the time, if you've got a horse that's travelling, <coughs> I mean, you've been watching millions of races. You you can see a horse that's travelling in the run, and when you're riding it, you can feel when a horse is travelling in the run. Like I, I think I said on Saturday. Um, in the run, he didn't feel like a 40 to one shot for me because I was on the back of Bowman and I'm, and I'm, he, Bowman's got McDonald locked on the fence, which yep. McDonald's locked on the fence very often. And I know Bowman's not going to pull out and go because he wants to keep James on the rail so that he can't get out and go. But for me, I need Huey to get, get, get into the race so that I can get a cart. Yes. And it sort of happened a little bit late for me, which is, which is, I think the reason why I got there very late, but. I needed someone to get going to allow me to get dragged into the race before the top of the straight. And, but and how, how long do you wait for that before you just actually go wider and get the momentum up of your horse? Like that's got to be a tough decision. Well, you because you, if, if you pull out, if you're pulling out and and you and you making a run, as soon as that jockey inside you sees you pulling out, he pulls out as well. So you get pushed. You then um, you end up. Yeah. If you're on a on a horse that's not travelling, you just get pushed off the track. So it's always better to, to let someone pull off and, and get a cart and tail him, and then you sort of slingshot off his back. So that's... I know uh, that's better, but if it, at a certain stage, you've got to get going, don't you? You've got to make that decision when you yeah. go. Mm. Mm. Well, I know you've got to get, a, get to a trial, which is coming up in about 10 or 15 minutes, Glenn. But just lastly, let's say, uh, hypothetically, just something I'm interested in. Five years from now, you're a trainer at Ramwick, just hypothetically. And you've got a live chance in the Doncaster down on 51 kilos. And like us, you dislike, have a great dislike for Glenn Boss. You thought, who am I going to get? Will I take Jaden Lloyd or will I take Zach Lloyd? Which one would you take? Don't uh, sit on the fence. Come on. I, I've, look, you know what? Jaden 
Jaden is maybe a year or a year and a half older. Um, he's he's riding so well. Unbelievable. <laughs> and um, little fella just hasn't got it together yet. Um, so looks- Jaden, just because of his seniority at the moment, because that's well, what the stats say anyway. He's been there. He's been doing it a little bit longer than the other bloke. Yeah. Um, How would the other little bloke go? Is he like a little Chad Schofield? Uh, I think, hang on, let's get on to Jaden. I think Jaden started off, he went straight down to David Hayes and Euroa. He was a, he, uh, I don't think he coped with that big environment. He's come out of that. He's had a tough start. And now he's in a place where he's comfortable and he's, he's, he's enjoying it, riding with confidence. Whereas down in Victoria, I don't think he was. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we spoke about confidence at the top of the show for my, myself and most jockeys. But, but the, the younger guy, um, I know the people that were, he was riding track work for before he started, they all said, Nat, we want, we want to put Zach's the one, he'll be the one. To, but Jaden's the one that's proving it. He, he's, he's got the runs on the board. I, I love, he's got the most beautiful pair of hands on him. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and riding up against some of those boys up there, like Larry Cassidy, Jim Byrne, uh, Robbie Frad, James Orman, they're not, they're not legless. They can, Andrew Madden, they really ride strong. So he's doing a really good job up there for a kid. 100% right. And he's got a good mentor. Good on you, mate. Thanks for coming he's on dad. the show, Glenn. <laughs> oh, well, I think, what's your golf handicap now with this time off? But I got down to about, uh, my handicap's normally between 9 and 12. Oh, sweet. So that's it. We've got a game. Eh? We've got a game. GP, come on. Uh, they, they'd kill me. They'd kill me. <laughs> they'd kill me. I can't play anymore. You know that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, good having you on the show, Glenn. So like all the punters out there, hope you continue your good uh success because um you're a you're a, you're a writer a lot of us focus on especially i do because the price range you're in and uh whilst you've disappointed me for the last couple of years book has made up for it so glenn 10 years ago glenn was uh, glenn was crowing on the show how you were the best writer around and then of course he uh he uh he took the lull with uh, you well i'm a punter we, we you know it's all about backing winners i, I mentioned yonkers had a good chance on the friday show i thought i had a great chance in that race because of two particularly weak favorites i said but i've got glenn but i think you know he's had the one winner back he, let's, oh we let's, cheered him on thursday remember yeah in the live stream so yeah the seven dollar chance wherever it was anyway good luck glenn be safe that's the most important thing and plenty of winners here thanks, thanks very much mate that was awesome See you, glenn. good on you uh, glenn thank you if you're putting your money on me, I'm giving you a full go. <laughs> That's all we want. That's all we want. I don't like, I don't, ju- I don't like I- this head, head Glenn stuff that goes around. It's just the Oh, glitch. mate, no, you brought it up. It's all, <laughs> it's all dead to me. Because you know it's what? Good. You all might think it's a bit of a funny joke and all that. But sentiment like that, whilst it's completely false, yes. it gets in people's heads and that's the beginning of, that's the beginning of the end. Yeah, it's true. I, I, I agree with no, that, but it's you know, definitely true. Jockeys yeah. are public people, they have a public life. So bad. I mean, you think of it. I, I, I love a I love a joke and a laugh and all that, but it is not you paint people, you paint like it's, it's been painted. I've been painted like a, I fucking don't try on most of them or some of them. Nothing's further than the truth, but yeah. but, but we've it, never said that. No, I'm not saying that, but but that connotation leads to that, doesn't it? Yeah, but you derive your income from one people. You don't get the money off racing New South Wales. You get it off punters who have been taxed for every betting dollar collected by racing New South Wales. So when they have an opinion about a bad trot, it'd be a little bit like you going the footy and your best player for the box, whoever he is, you know, he's just not going well. And you guys, you know, if you were there going, he's had a fucking hopeless game. I mean, that you'd think that's acceptable. So it's give and take with public life, I feel. Yeah, look, I look. I said to you, I, I understand that that's that that's what it is. It doesn't come out of malice, but oh, it, no. it create it. Cre- well, it, some people it might, um, but the majority obviously it's not. But it creates a bad look for a person who's like, from take from my perspective, on a on a downward trend. It's just it's a, when you when you're on when you're on when you're flying, everything goes well. I understand that. We are yeah. we're punters. We understand that. Any, anyway, I wish everyone everyone the best. And yeah. uh, you're, look, mate, you're, you're two winners out of seven rides. You know, in three months from now, let's hope your hashtag is fucking great, Glenn. Look, I'm <laughs> telling you, you we, we like to find jockeys on an upward spiral because they're yeah. very profitable because the market doesn't find them. And um, uh, it's a shame we've done this show because I'd suggest the fact that I was going to back you for the next month, um, I mightn't get the prices I was going to get otherwise. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> you keep well, riding barrier trial winners. That's obviously kept me fresh too. And when I win a race, I don't care if, if it's what price it is. The horses don't know what price they're going around. And you know, yeah, but then I do. I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. See you, mate. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Bye. Thanks. Oh, we've lost Glenn. Okay. Uh, do you want to no, stop recording now?